Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transformed darkness into light. Through the blessings of this glorious Sunday, make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, and brought us back to his Father, and enriched us with the gifts of his Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Only begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages, and by your creative will you separated light from darkness. On this, the first day of the week, you fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We praise and thank you and celebrate, proclaiming, Blessed are you, for you appeared in the flesh on earth like us, and you lived among us. Blessed are you, for you were buried and counted among the dead, and you shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you, for you rose to life, giving good hope to all, and you filled the angels with radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection. Breathe life into our departed and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal light that you have prepared from those who love you. With them we praise and thank you for your graces and glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, forever.
O Lord, accept the fragrance of our incense and our prayers, and may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and actions. Hear our petitions and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O Lord, our God, to you be glory forever. Kadishat Aloho Kadishat Choyel Tolo Kadishat Shout with joy from the mountains, Sunday is a feast so great. Offer praise to the Lord God, and with angels celebrate. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Barak Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you. You are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by all, shown to be a letter of Christ administered by us, written not in ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets that are hearts of flesh. Such confidence we have through Christ toward God. Not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us. Rather, our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. Praise be to God always.
to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. We burn this incense. Before the proclamation of the Gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, After this, the Lord appointed 70 others, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs, to every town and to every place he intended to visit. And he said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you as lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no extra sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace lives there, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it shall return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not move about from one house to another. This is the truth, peace be with you. The Lord appointed 70 others, and he sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So as I said yesterday to the Saturday group, I love you people. You came out. You came to see our Lord. And I have great admiration, since we'll all admit that it's hot from the beginning, that you're here, because you're probably exactly the same people who are here when there's three feet of snow the night before six months from now. I had training in this. When I used to work in Kansas City for four years, this is the kind of weather Kansas City has starting in May, and it goes till about the middle of October. And then it was an old building built in the 1920s, absolutely gorgeous, sat 700 people, stone, redwood, walnut, it was absolutely exquisite, slate roof. But someone doing renovations decided it was a really good idea to caulk all the windows shut. So you couldn't even open a window. So here, as you also do, we just have to take a little bit of sweat off on occasion. But in Kansas City, it was useless because it just poured off all those months. So having acknowledged the heat, fortunately, the gospel is short today. Though I was asked beforehand if we had a Cliff Note version. 
Now we could do cliff notes, but I think maybe not all of us, but some have had experience that you do just cliff notes in high school or in college and you flunk the exam. So I'm afraid if I gave you cliff notes today, it's not going to work for you on the day of salvation. So let us look at this gospel of St. Luke. What's amazing about it, of course, is that it, at, first look, at first appearance, it's exactly the same gospel as last week. We consider the apostles being sent out, but that's the change. In this instance, this is the Gospel of St. Luke. And it's unique to all four of the Gospels. There's the only place that this is actually discussed, that our Lord sends out 72 disciples, two by two, to prepare the way. If you remember last week, it was the apostles, the 12. They were given the power to heal, the power to cure, and they were sent out with the power over the demonic. They were given about the same stipulations. Don't take an extra wallet with you. Don't leave, leave your credit cards at home. You don't need extra shoes. Leave everything behind. You depend upon providence. So he tells the same group. To both groups, he says the same thing. But here we have 70 people that were called disciples. And what's interesting about it is, this is one of the things in the gospel that we often miss because we live in a world of sentimentality, at least as far as Christianity for the last century. Where everyone, lo Jesus loves everyone in the same way, which isn't true. If you read the gospel, gospel tells you very clearly St. John was the beloved disciple. Didn't mean our Lord didn't love the others, but it meant there was a special love for this John, son of Zebedee. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus were intimate friends with our Lord. Our Lord loved the apostles. He loved everyone in Jerusalem. He sought their salvation. But we're told very specifically this family in Bethany were very close to our Lord. To the point when it was time that Lazarus was very sick and dying, the, uh, the note that they sent to our Lord simply said, the one whom you love is sick. And that was all they needed to say. They didn't have to say, Lazarus, hey, you remember us? Lazarus is sick. And so in all the people that followed our Lord, there are thousands of them, right? We see it in the Gospels. Thousands of people are fed twice on the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. One case at 7,000, another case 4,000 people that are fed. So you always have crowds that come around our Lord. They're the, they're, the, they're the people who show up on Christmas once a year because they get something. Those thousands followed our Lord because you're going to heal my daughter or my son is sick or I have a brother who's just died. These are the people who came and there's nothing wrong with that. But they came primarily about themselves. And so when push came to shove, they're all gone. And on the day of our Lord's crucifixion, how many people are actually still with our Lord? You can count them on one hand, basically. But amongst these thousands of people, there were people that also came to our Lord and said, I wish to learn from you, Rabbi. These are the disciples. These are the people who really want to learn something, to hear, not just simply they come because they want a miracle worked. And to remember our Lord oftentimes when, the, when they were asked for miracles, he kind of buffeted them back and say, you know, it's a perverse and adulterous generation that looks from signs from heaven. I'm here to give you more than just a show. And so these individuals would come and they would say, we want to learn. And remember the word in Latin, dishere, is to learn. So disciple just means someone who's a learner. And amongst those people, our Lord chose 70. And he sends them out two by two to go to all the villages and towns where he's going to go to prepare the way. And that's the first thing we draw from this gospel. We all know because we all have experience with friends and family, none of us, not I, not you, not anyone can give someone the faith. That is a gift from God. We've always said that. Which is why you've probably slammed your head against the wall many times throughout the decades, thinking it makes so much sense. Why do you not see it? They don't see it because the faith is a question of what takes place between God, his grace, and the individual soul, the individual heart. And that we can't do. We can't touch, we can't do anything. We can't give anyone the faith. 
but we can dispose the ground. And that's what these disciples are doing when they go town to town, place to place, to prepare the coming of the Lord. They're not the Lord, they don't give the Lord, they don't bring the Lord, but they prepare the ground. And as we've been slogging away for a year and a half with the boys, we've talked about that. That disposition is what we call credibility. You give a reason why the Christian faith is believable, but that's all we can do. It may be telling the lives of the saints who are in these windows, telling history of the church, telling great events. It can be all kinds of things, or beauty of certain doctrines. Some people have been converted by the beauty of the music, Gregorian chant, for example. But that is only a disposition, that's not the faith. And so the disciples are doing that. They go out, they've learned enough, they go two by two. And the second point for us to take from that is that there is mutual support. None of us do this alone. There is a body of Christ, the church, which works. And so the sending out two by two is that there's a mutual support between them to prepare this way. And that's an important thing to remember. None of us are left in isolation. The third point is why 70? 70 has a reflection of two things for Israel, and all the Israelites would have known this. The first thing is that Moses on Mount Sinai, he takes 70 of the elders, and they form the Sanhedrin. They form the governing body for the people of Israel. And the beginning, it's because Moses goes up into Mount Sinai, and he's gone for over a month, 40 days. And so these men are the ones who have to answer the questions for all the thousands of people who have left Egypt during that time. But the Sanhedrin becomes a permanent body, these 70 men, the 70 elders who govern Israel. The other thing that it reflects is that in the book of Genesis, if you read it, there are 70 nations at the beginning of creation that are listed, besides Israel. And so what our Lord is doing by choosing 70 disciples is not because there's only 70, but because the 70 are also reflecting the creation of humanity and that this gospel and this salvation is destined for everyone who is changed within their heart. That's the other reflection. And so it's a universal aspect. And the last three points are very simple. Our Lord says, do not invoke peace upon anyone. Don't talk to anyone when you go. Don't stop at Sila's, don't go to Starbucks, don't visit with your cousin, thinking, oh, I'm going to this town, my sister just lives off a mile off this road, so I'll go over, no. And what that is for the disciples is the singular vision of what they're doing is to prepare the path of the Lord. Not stop along the way. There's nothing wrong with saying hello to people, but that's not what you're here for. You're here to lay the foundation of the coming of the Lord. And that's why when you arrive at a house, you say, Shlom Beto Hono. You say, peace be to this house. You wish it peace. And again, in the Old Testament, the vision of peace is it's a creative force that comes out from the hidden divinity. And it comes down, and where the ground is fertile, it brings forth fruit. But when it doesn't find fertile ground, it returns to the divinity, which is why our Lord says, when you come, you wish peace upon this household. And there is a Bar Shlomo, a son of peace within this household. Your peace will remain upon them. If not, it returns to you. And so it's a message of healing. It's a message of peace. And when you try to work with your friends or your cousins or whoever it is that you know and try to lay the groundwork for our Lord's work, you wish them peace. Because your ultimate desire is not members, is not people, but is that they receive the same healing grace that each of us have received. And the last point is he says, you stay in the house where you go. Don't flit around from place to place. You focus, you till the ground, you prepare the coming of the Lord. Stay where you're at. Of course, you eat what's put in front of you. Eat what they give you. You're worthy of the laborers. Your labor is worthy of his wages. And so you do this. And then he says, don't go from house to house. You stay where you're at. So what I leave you with is that from that one house, you're going to find other connections. If you read the Acts of the Apostles, St. Paul and Barnabas and those go to the island of Cyprus. 
Why do they leave Palestine where the whole thing began? Why do they go off to this island? They go to the island because Barnabas is originally from Cyprus. So he's got cousins. Let's go tell my cousins about what is taking place in Jerusalem and Antioch. That's why when you arrive in the place, you stay there, you work with this family, you see these people, and from them you will find their cousins, and their cousins will have cousins, and it's always an interpersonal human connection. No one has ever been or will be converted by a website, by a pamphlet, or by a book. A book may lay a disposition, but there will always have to be a human being next to that book at some point to transfer and to communicate the faith. We can listen to Gregorian chant beautifully and be moved by it, but again, until we have a human face to communicate that faith to us, it will only be a disposition of ground. And the very last point, how many disciples again? Seventy. How many of you are here on a weekend, on any given weekend? It averages about seventy. Our Lord found that sufficient to lay the whole preparation of the kingdom of God throughout Palestine. You must never waver in the conviction that what our Lord gives you deep down by having given each of us individually the faith is the ability to communicate and to dispose the ground for that faith to hundreds of others, thousands of others, who knows. But we all have that ability because we have received healing, we have the ability to communicate healing, and that's why our Lord sends out two by two to renew and to recreate the original humanity of 70 nations in Genesis. Follow this path, and we know what we do to bring those to the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now we accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of your love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, you are true love, a security that is ever sure, and hope that never fails. Grant love, happiness, and everlasting peace to your children here before you. 
Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and souls, and with a holy kiss worthy of your blessed name, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. That each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. before your majesty send us your grace and glorious blessings from the heights of your heavenly sanctuary that we may glorify you your only son and your holy spirit now and forever Amen. O lord you sent your beloved son at the appointed time for our salvation and he gave us these holy and life-giving mysteries do not look upon us as strangers, and do not turn your holy face away from us because of our many sins. For you alone are the Holy One with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. It is right and just to praise you, O Lord of all in heaven and on earth. The powers on high in the heavens where they dwell glorify you. The fiery ranks exalt you, the cherubim bless you, and the seraphim worship you. They cry out and they proclaim. Father, and you are with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, one and indivisible in nature, and you sanctify all things by your divine power. For our salvation, you sent your Son into the world. He descended, became flesh, suffered, and was crucified for us, who had distorted his image. For the Obiamo haudukum hashodi le ma bid khay in sab lahmo bida kori shanto o bar khu kadesh watso ya bil talmi da kado mara sab khulam mehne bol khu hono deni ta Fahro Dil, 
تحلو فایکون و خلف سعیه متقصی و متیه با خصوصی خون و خوی در علم علمی قنا القوس جمزيخ من حمرا ومن مايو بارخ قادر قابل تلميذا وكارو مارا سابشتا ومهنة كل خوه خونو ديني تاو دمو ديلا دياتي كي خداتو دخلو فایکو و خلاف سعیه متشر و متیه با خویسون خواهم و خواین در عالم عالمی For whenever you eat this body and drink this blood, you proclaim my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Christ our God, we remember your plan of salvation and we implore your goodness. When you come in glory with your holy angels and all await the reward they deserve. And when you place the sheep to the right and the goats to the left, do not look upon us as strangers to your household and do not turn your holy face away from us. Do not let our sins and offenses pierce your holy heart and do not separate us from you. For we have professed your holy name and have proclaimed your divinity. Rather treat us according to your promises. Forgive our sins, pardon us, and have mercy upon your inheritance. For this your repenting church implores you and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O oh Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O oh God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit to send and rest upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Manin monio, manin monio, manin monio, nite modro chokhayu kadisho. Onachen alainu al korbono chono. Descent, he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries sanctify the bodies and souls of those who share in them, cleanse their hearts, purify their thoughts, and be a pledge of the heavenly kingdom and new life forever. O Lord, we now remember in this sacrifice all the holy churches and the shepherds of the true faith, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops. With them, we remember the priests, the deacons, and all who serve your holy church, 
we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them. To lead all the faithful into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory, we pray to you, O Lord. For the peace and stability of the whole world, for a blessed and prosperous year, for an abundant harvest, for the sick and the oppressed, for all who call upon your holy name on land, at sea, or in the air, and who profess that you are the true God, we pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have presented the offerings upon this altar and those who desire to do so but were unable, and grant them their petitions. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember all the saints, the fathers, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Tecla, and all the righteous and the just. Through their prayers, make us worthy to stand among them. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those who have left us and have gone to you from the first Christian disciples to this day. They were signed with the seal of baptism and received the precious body and blood of your Son. They wait for you in your life-giving hope. Raise them up on the last day and in your mercy forgive all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O God the Father, you accept prayers and you answer petitions. 
You taught us through your beloved Son to stand before you and to call upon you with pure souls and clear consciences, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation and from harm of evil. For you have power over all, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. <clears throat> Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, in your grace and abundant mercy, bless those who bow before you. Make us worthy to share in your life-giving mysteries and to join the assembly of your saints, that with them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one holy, holy Father, Father, one holy Son, one, one holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us, Make us worthy, O Lord God so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for the night. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy upon us. Gracious God and Father, how can we repay you for your goodness and for the salvation you have just given us? Who can give you the glory you truly deserve? In our weakness and insofar as we are able, we worship, praise, and thank you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Jesus Christ, our God, we worship, thank, and praise you. We implore your goodness and abundant mercy for the salvation of the whole world, for the protection of the living and eternal rest to the departed, for the feeding of the hungry and the support of the needy, for the visiting of the sick and the consolation of the grieving. For your grace dwell in them, and by your abundant mercy give them life. By your holy cross bless your people, and protect your inheritance. Adoration is due to you, 
to your Father and to your holy and life-giving Spirit, now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Thank you.